Alrighty, to get started, we got a new smoker. What a better way to break in the smoker than my grandfather's 94th birthday. Shout out to him. He's rocking and rolling at a brisk young age at 94. This is the deal. We have two briskets. You guys have seen plenty of videos how to trim a brisket. So these are prime briskets. This has Q that with black pepper because we're going to chop this up and make uh, brisket sandwiches. And this is that Texas rub that we always talk about. We're going to do this for sliced brisket. This is the fat trimmings I saved. We're going to render that out for our smoked beef tallow. All right, we have our temps pegged at 250. All right, so here we go. Oh, I'm going to keep the fat on the bottom. Slide these out just a hair. Rocking that middle rack today. Woo. Now that we got the beef trimmings and the brissets on, I'm gonna do a quick walk around with you. This smoker's been in the works for over a year. Uh, been trying to keep it close to the vest. You guys see my coal bed. Working down at a log, keep that going. We'll try to rock the 250 mark all the way up until the wrap stage. This is the hot box. Five shells and they pull out and they are actually pretty large. That's a lot of space right there. Some of this stuff is going to be upgrades if you guys are interested, but these are the off-road package. It's got the bigger tires. It's got a stainless shell shelf. You guys saw the three large racks in there. This is called the fridge because it looks like a fridge. Um, you got your three thermometers. And obviously, as you can tell, that's why it's called the hybrid. They've attached a pellet hopper and a unit to there as well. So we're in the training phase. We're in the learning phase. We're in the just test it out phase. The whole idea behind this was to the same reason why I ended up switching to pellet smokers to begin with, time and effort. With doing videos and having a full-time job, I just didn't have enough time to enjoy the outdoor experience. If you guys actually look on the Flat Top King, I think like my third video ever, we used to cook on stick burners all the time. That's before YouTube started. As my life became faster and faster, we had kids, they became more involved. Then all of a sudden you take a one-time full-time or a full-time job into a two full-time jobs, your time is limited. So we kind of went with the pellet smoker route. We're back to the stick burners, which is where I originally began. And uh, the idea is same thing that I struggle with. What if you only have four or five hours, right? If it's a 12 or 15 hour cook, are you just gonna abandon the cook completely? Do you have time for it? So it's almost like a pellet assist. You start their hot box. Some people argue how much time that barbecue really takes on smoke. So the first four or five hours, run your logs, it brings up the metal to temp. You can turn your pellet hopper on, get it going, and that's gonna cruise you the rest of the time. You wanna smoke for eight hours with real wood and hold it overnight, you can hold it in your pellet hopper. There's a lot of things that we can do with it that we're gonna be testing out, but I'm glad to be back with real wood. And uh, honestly, I'm just glad to be back with real wood. Like, it really excites me. I know you guys are wanting it, and I love to uh, stick it to the people that say you don't know how to cook with a uh, easy bake oven. So here we are rocking it. You guys see the smoke rolling, that means that fire's caught. And uh, we'll check back in a couple hours. Whew, just got done running. All right, eight hours later. So I'm gonna pull this out, kind of walk it back to the deck and keep you guys informed of what, what we've been doing. I just wanna get to show you a peek coming off the grill. Alrighty, so quick update. The four hour mark, I literally just took this whole tray out, just like you saw, and rotated it, okay? The left side of that grill is gonna run a little bit harder than the right side, about 25 degrees. Just wanna keep it even. Once we hit like about the five hour mark, I noticed that my briskets were running a little bit harder than what I wanted for the time frame I wanted. Just cut that fire back down, instead of running about 250, I run about 200. Here we are at the eight hour mark, and we're shooting anywhere between 175 and about 175, uh, plus or minus. So I called uh, one of my barbecue guys that runs a food truck around Knoxville. You guys see me wear his shirt all the time. Called Smoke Pickle Barbecue. He does a lot of catering. I mean, a ton of catering. He suggests to do the overnight rest. Cook it 80% the way through. 
and overnight it in the refrigerator and then finish it tomorrow. I've never even heard of this method. I'm not the world's greatest barbecuer. I've mentioned that several times. I don't claim to be. So this is the idea. We're literally going to take it right off on a cooling rack. I'm gonna let this cool down to about 150 degrees outside. And then we're literally gonna put it in my refrigerator just like this overnight, not wrapped or anything. Then tomorrow, while we're making the chicken and the ribs, the sausage and the pork, I'm going to put this on the smoker, unwrapped, and we're going to bring it up to temp and cook it just like a brisket. That's his recommendation. Like I said, I never tried it, and that's what we're going to do. So looking forward to that. Whew, I'm tired. Alrighty, day two, the smoker's warming up. We got our chickens out. And basically, I'm just gonna give those a dab, get the moisture out. I have spatchcocked four chickens. I've saved you the pain and agony of watching me do it. Simply, all we're gonna do, presentation tied down first. We have our all-purpose rub. And this is exactly what I did with those briskets. Uh, the one that had the cue that on there, I actually did a light dusting of this as well. So. Just like that, we're gonna knock out the rest of them. Smokers up to temp. I just wanna give you a visual of what they look like coming out of the refrigerator overnight. So you can see that we've definitely got a nice bark on there. Uh, while the temperature of the grill is rising and getting settled in, I thought, I'd, you know, you can go and throw it on, it's not gonna matter. Plus I think that cold air is gonna give me a good sense of how much temp drop I'm gonna have and then I can adjust it with the log. six slabs of st louis ribs i just like to score the membrane i don't take the membrane off use a little different seasoning day we're gonna go 50 50 so this is reload uh made him at a event here in knoxville and so i've tested it um, tasted it and tested it so he's got a little heat in his mine doesn't he's got different things in mine so i think we're just gonna go 50 50 i like the way he he does his so 50 50 on these you can see right here we got a slab already done looking fantastic and there we go two slabs done four more to go all right fire settled it in somewhere around 250 internals 248 somewhere through there i know you're laughing at me because i have a thermometer but really we're doing a lot of things so it just kind of keeps me aware of the temps so what we're going to do is take this off take this one out take this one out Oh, I hear you. From there, this is gonna be the hot side, so we're gonna have to rotate this. So a lot of times people rotate the product. I actually just pull out the shelf and just rotate it like that. So I'll just uh, like halfway through, just take this whole shelf out and just rotate it just like you saw me do that one. And there's six slabs right there across.
All right, one of our briskets done, we're just gonna let it rest at room temperature, maybe bring it down to about 165 degrees. We'll put some tallow on it, wrap it, and put it in the cooler for the long rest. We've only got about three hours to the party, so it's about perfect time for us. All right, next we're gonna uh, wrap the ribs. I'm gonna put about three pads of butter, not much. We're not gonna do syrup or brown sugar. Both of our seasonings combined are pretty uh, sweet to begin with, so I don't wanna overdo it. We can always glaze them once we take them off if we need to, I doubt it. So kind of right there in the middle. Oh yeah. Just wrapping up nice and tight. In the cooler they go. Alrighty, second brisket's pulled off, probing nice and tender. Just goes easy as can be through butter. Uh, I don't know, we're averaging, I don't know if you guys see that, 198. Brisket goes right on the side. Pour some of the juice back in. This is some of that smoked beef tallow from yesterday. Just give that a good mix. A little pour, a little gug. Give it a wrap. So fat side up. Oh, that's tender. Fat side down. Fat side up. Fat side down. Fat side up. That's when we go to the cooler with the ribs, and we're just waiting on the second brisket to cool down. Alrighty, we're gonna work on the. I call it the chicken box. It's the warmer. It's the hot box. This always runs about 50 to 100 degrees hotter, depends on what kind of uh, fire you're rocking. We can add one more log because we're gonna need it. Probably a few more. So let's see here. I'm gonna work uh, maybe the top shelf. All right, something like that right there because the closer you get to your fire, the hotter it is. We'll be able to rotate these. I'll probably just rotate them, honestly, the shelves instead of the meat. I like doing that. And we'll just keep the fire going. Obviously, you're just gonna heat your internal temps. And then now we need to put the sausages on. We have some smoked sausages from the caterer I was talking about, smoked pickle. So these are jalapeno. We're just gonna be able to warm these up. And these are just regular. Alrighty, chicken is done. Woo, what a day. I'm gonna show you really quick. I can't film and take it off at the same time, uh, like safely. You guys see right there, all that chicken. I just been rotating my shelves. I actually put this shelf from the bottom up and then that radiant heat was able to work its way down. So looking good. I'm gonna go and pull these bad boys off. This one has been tender from the word go. From the time we put it on the grill, the whole way out, this one has done nothing but just mm, scream goodness. We'll see if we can do the money shot, although this is all chopped. This is my homemade famous barbecue sauce, a little vinegary. Bet you've never seen a brisket cut with a meat cleaver. <laughs> About right there is that line. Yep. No, yep. no squeezing. We'll take this, cut a slice. We'll share that. Burn ends. All right, honey, here you go. Okay. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Shout out to Smoked Pickle Barbecue in Knoxville, Tennessee, for giving us that tip so we didn't have to stay up all night. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna save them little bites for me right there. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. Just a touch of seasoning. 
I don't want to overpower it. I do want the bristle to come through, but this is almost just like just a touch. And then we're gonna chop up the, uh, the point and just mix it all together. I mean, that right there mm. is a bun of goodness. You put that between a good sesame bun, you're good to go. <laughs> you can tell it's good. I can always tell by the look on your face. See that? See how juicy that is? That's a barbecue to be proud of, honey. About to feed 30 people. Alrighty. Last but not least, the ribs. They've just been resting. It's not a bad way to start the day right there. We have a barbecue sauce on the inside so they can choose to put barbecue sauce if you want to. We got like a Carolina gold, we got like a vinegar style, we got a sweet style, we got buns, you name it. So finally, 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 stack those bad boys up. We'll take the two ribs for us. I finally take my gloves off. There she goes for all those marbles. Still juicy, look at that thing. Mm. Lee, honey, y'all did, your, did yourself today, Big Daddy. Mm. Clean bite. <laughs> oh, that's gonna work good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All day. Twice on Sunday. Taste that. That work? Not good. Can I finish the other one before I go inside and meet people I've never met before? <laughs> hey, we did uh, two briskets. We chopped one up. We got the baked beans. We got the slaw. We got six slabs of ribs. We got your sliced brisket. We got your jalapeno sausage, your regular sausage. A big old tub of macaroni and cheese because everybody loves the macaroni and cheese. Then we did a homemade banana pudding and a homemade coconut cake. If that doesn't feed the family, I don't know what does. All right, guys, there you go. So if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. What you guys want me to cook on it, you know the drill. A lot of barbecue, a lot of family, a lot of food. We have pounded that thing the last two days. Super excited about the journey. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Peace. Banana pudding time. Let's go, let's go.